r slash ask science how does fat and protein digestion works difference between lean and fatty protein and the effect on digestion time hello altogether unfortunately i have many different questions about all things fat and protein digestion specifically regarding animal products with different fat content I want to understand the science and the chemistry behind the whole topic and also educate myself even further because it seems like I know nothing. I tried to do some research and found several different claims, opinions and explanations. Before I get into the questions, I want to present the claims from the two different camps because obviously there are more schools of thought. Team Fatty Meat Slash Protein The more fat that is in the protein the more delayed is digestion and therefore it sits in the small intestine longer and the required enzymes have more time to do their work and help digest the protein and the fat more efficiently, fully and easier. If the protein is leaner it goes to the digestive tract much faster, probably undigested and not fully absorbed by the small intestine. Muscle meats like chicken breast or lean steak can aggravate constipation and therefore it's beneficial to replace them with gelatinous meats instead and cuts with more soft tissue like chicken thighs, fatty meats etc. Humans can only use meat fibers properly when they come with fat, collagen and other substances. Dark meat like chicken thighs or fatty cuts of meat contain more nutrients like zinc, iron and more vitamins like B12 additional folate, pantothenic acid, selenium, phosphorus, and vitamins K and A which aids in digestion. Team Lean Meat Slash Protein Meats with higher fat content take longer to digest. Also, foods with the least amount of fat, least amount connective tissues, and shorter muscle fibers are easier to digest. It means that fish is the easiest meat to digest, then poultry, pork and lastly beef. It also means that if the piece of chicken or turkey you are eating has more fat or long muscle fibers, thighs or drumsticks, than a lean piece of steak or a lean cut of pork, then that piece of chicken will be harder to digest. A piece of boneless skinless chicken breast is easier to digest than a chicken thigh. Lean ground beef, 93 sevenths, is easier to digest than fattier ground beef, 80 twentieths, and a lean fillet is easier to digest than a ribeye or beef brisket, chick etc. Okay, so far so good and I'm confused. What I found is a study about myoglobin and it seems like that dark meat or cuts of poultry and beef with more myoglobin and more connective tissue are harder to digest than white meat or poultry slash beef with less myoglobin. My questions are. What sits longer in the stomach, how long and why? What sits longer in the small intestine, how long and why? What kind of poultry slash meat moves faster through the digestive tract, especially through the small intestine? Which cuts require more effort? more enzymes, more stomach acid. Which cuts are more taxing on the liver? Is it easier and quicker for the small intestine to absorb nutrients from lean or fatty protein and why? Which factor determines whether a piece of animal protein slash fat is light or heavy, fast or slow digesting when looking at the fat slash food in isolation? Is it the fat content, connective tissue, a combination? Is a fatty ribeye or hamburger patty, 70 30ths or 80 20ths, easier to digest than a lean fillet steak? Or a fatty chicken thigh easier than a chicken breast? Pretend that all meats slash beef slash poultry are cooked to a moist internal temperature, not overcooked, tough or dry. Are low-fat dairy products easier and quicker to digest than full-fat dairy products? At the end of the day I want to know which cuts of poultry slash meat slash beef slash fish are easier to digest for the stomach and small intestine and which cuts are moving faster through the digestive tract. Also from which cuts the small intestine can easier absorb nutrients. I'm looking for a evidence-based scientific answers in plain English that I can understand what's going on and why. I don't need studies, although it would be nice but everything backed up with science-based explanations and evidence not opinions or preferences like almost everything on YouTube, food blogs etc. I'm looking for people who study this stuff or work in this field and know what they talking about. I'm very thankful for every explanation, help and for everyone who reads this. I appreciate every tip where and how I can educate myself because I don't want to be lazy. Thank you very much and have a great day. GI Physiologist here absorption of foodstuffs depends entirely on chemical composition of the food. The food must move from the lumen of the GI tract across the walls of the cells lining the, the small intestine and thence into the bloodstream. The cell walls are composed of lipid, fat, thus only fats can cross the cell wall unassisted. The fats that you eat are too big, both physically too big, must be crushed into smaller pieces, and chemically too big, must be broken down into its component parts by the action of enzymes coming from the pancreas and or stomach wall, 
to cross the cell wall in the form in which they are eaten. The breakdown from big hunks to small hunks occurs in the stomach due to repeated gastric contractions squashing the food and mixing it with the various GI secretions of saliva, acid, and some enzymes. If the fat is not broken down sufficiently it can't be attacked by the enzymes because they are water-soluble and cannot fight their way through a big hunk of fat. This process requires time not required for non-fat foods so fats stay in the stomach longer than non-fats if eaten separately. If eaten together, everything is slowed down in the stomach. Once the fats are sufficiently broken down physically they pass into the small intestine where more enzymes finish the chemical breakdown into components small enough to pass through the lipid cell walls. Unfortunately, at this point the fatty particles are floating in the aqueous secretions of the stomach and small intestine and cannot reach the lipid cell wall. To make matters worse there is also a layer of water bound to the lining of the small intestine which also blocks movement of the fat components. This is where bile comes into the picture. Molecules of bile are water-soluble on one end and fat-soluble on the other so they form into little tiny hollow balls with the fatty ends pointing into the center of the ball. As they form, the fatty food components are trapped inside the ball. The water-soluble ends are pointing out from the ball so the entire ball is now water-soluble. These balls, micelles, move through all the water and water layers and dump the fatty components directly on the cell walls where they can now pass through the wall into the cell. To pass from inside the cell out the back side into the blood the fatty components must form another hollow ball with the fatty material inside and proteins outside which allows the fatty material to move around in the blood once it is absorbed. Last but not least the fatty material moves from the small intestinal cells into the lymph not directly into the bloodstream where it must end up to be used for fuel. Thus it travels through the lymph system until it reaches the thoracic duct ere it is dumped into the bloodstream. Obviously, fat digestion is a complex time, consuming process with many steps all of which must happen in the correct order. Malabsorption of fat is quite common and causes smelly diarrhea. Proteins are water-soluble and special carriers exist in the walls of cells allowing amino acids to be transported into and out of the cells so the process of protein digestion and absorption is simple and rapid. Eat the protein, proteases secreted by the mouth, stomach and pancreas begin to break down the proteins into constituent amino acids. These move directly into the small intestine where they bind to the carriers on the cell walls and viola, absorption. Malabsorption of proteins is rare and usually involves a congenitally missing carrier. Complete digestion and absorption of a high-fat meal may take several hours longer than that of low-fat meal.